excited that God is doing something new in our midst. <laughs> All right, just, just, just let, let's watch the video. After a brush with inner city life at the age of 15, Pastor Gregory Lanre Ijiwala gave his life to Christ and has not looked back since. At 16 years old, when his peers were still trying to figure out what next steps to take in life, he served as one of the pioneers and leaders of his first church planting assignment, a high school Bible study youth group. He has since been involved in many more church planting projects and is currently the founder and senior pastor of the City Light Church in Chicago. He is a prolific author with works in the inspirational, fictional, non-fictional, and poetry genres. Today, Pastor Langray comes to the Accelerate Conference armed with a word that will challenge, retool, and re-energize you for the journey ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Accelerate Conference, Pastor Gregory Lanre Ijiwala. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? Someone say, I'm blessed. Yes. And highly favored. Yes. Say, I am accelerating. Yes. Say, the, the next six months yes. of this year yes. will be so full of speed yes. that everyone that knows me, yes. thank you, everyone that has known me, you know, we'll, we'll be so surprised at what God is doing in my life. And they will give glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, celebrate God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Uh, let me, you know, just begin by thanking uh, the Elevation Church. Thank you so much for such a wonderful week. I have been so blessed, so inspired. Um, I, of course, I came here to minister, but I came here to be ministered to. And just over the past uh, few days that I've been here, God has spoken specific things uh, to me about my own life and ministry. And I'm leaving this place today um, just so excited. I'm so, so blessed. I'm ready to accelerate. Amen. <laughs> I want to thank um, specifically Kumbi and Tony. And some of you may not know their names. Uh, they've been the people driving me around. Um, yesterday, they spent the whole day with me till night, taking me to the mainland everywhere. I want to really appreciate them. They are wonderful people, Pastor Godman. You have great people. You have wonderful people. So I really want to appreciate them and all the other people um, that have uh, been helping us. I want to thank, of course, my friends, pastors, pastors Godman, Pastor Bola. Thank you so much for, for the wonderful reception and for the opportunity. Amen. I'm glad I still have some, some more days with Pastor Godman. You know, after today, we're moving to another African country. And, you know, we'll go and download Accelerate on them. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to share very um, quickly, just continue sharing on... Uh, what I started speaking on on Thursday on the, the 21 immutable laws of relationships. So the title of the message was um, Gain Grounds Through Relationships. So I spoke about, um, I think I spoke about four of the laws of uh, relationships um, on Thursday. If you were not around, I'm sure you can go get the message and uh, just listen to it. But I would just like to recap a little bit. Amen. Um, the first one was the law of non-isolation. That was the first thing God mentioned about relationship in the Bible. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It's not good for the man to be alone. Now, the man that God was speaking about was a man that was in God's presence a man that had not committed sin, a man that was placed strategically in Eden. But God looked at him as he was fellowshipping with him and said, this is not, uh, this is not the best that this man can, can have. This man needs something else, needs other people. Now, he was speaking specifically about his spouse there, 
but there's a, there's a principle that goes beyond that of a spouse if you trace it through scriptures. And that, that principle is simply that we're not created for isolation. The destiny and the purpose that God has given to you is too big for you to accomplish alone. It's too big for you to accomplish alone. So you are going to need people. You're going to need divine relationships to accomplish it. Someone once said, and I think it's true, they said, without, of course, you know the Bible, Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says that without a vision, the people perishes. Uh, the person said, also without the people, the vision perishes. So no matter what God has called you to do, you're going to need some people. You're going to need people for companionship. You're going to need friends. You're going to need mentors. You're going to need peers. And you can see from the testimonies of everybody that came here to preach, I was watching out and I was just looking at all the laws of relationship as they were speaking. Like Reverend Sam was speaking yesterday and I was saying, wow, he was talking about Bishop David Oedepo, you know, and all that. I was like, wow, that's a love that, that's a love this, that's a love that, that's a love that, you know. Exactly the same thing. So they, they followed those things as they were led by the Spirit. And that's why they are where they are right now. So God is giving you the same opportunity because there's no respect of persons. So you need to take advantage of that and begin, make it intentional. And I'm going to talk a lot more about intentionality to build relationships because you are going to need relationships. Okay? And the second law I spoke about was the law of partnership. The law of partnership. Law of partnership simply um, says that relationships will multiply your efforts in life. The right relationships will multiply your efforts in life. What you could have accomplished alone, when you do it with the right set of people, you get more done. You get more done. It's a law. It's a principle in the Bible. One which is a thousand, two which is ten thousand. If two of you shall agree on that as touching anything, to be done for them and my father which is in heaven. Amen. Two are better than one for they have a good reward for their labor. There's one alone who has no friend or brother. And then there's no hand to all his toil. And he does not even know who he's laboring for. So there's something about just doing things alone. You know, sometimes even accomplishment, like you, you, you've been working so hard and, you know, working with God, and suddenly, you know, you have some breakthroughs. Sometimes it's not even the breakthrough alone that you want. You want to be able to share it with other people. Isn't that true? You want people to be around you when you are in your moment of joy. Isn't that true? And you want people to be around you when sometimes you go through the dark seasons of life like uh, Dr. Mensah talked about. Amen. You want the right set of people to be around you, you know, to talk to you. To... So that's, so there's, there's something about, about partnership. And I have seen that. I have, you know, I, you know, ever since I learned this law, I've made it a law to myself that, number one, I'm going to be very much involved in what other people are doing, my friends. And number two, I'm going to make sure that whatever I do, I try to do it with, with them. That's why I was so excited when we all headed to Rwanda today. I'm sure, you know, what we're going to do, there's going to be multiplied, you know, in, in amazing ways. Amen. Amen. The power partnership. Amen. And then the, law, the, the next one um, was um, the law of impartation. Everybody say impartation. But Reverend Sam talked a lot about that yesterday, about how you can simply change your life by being with the right set of people. Even if you are the most foolish person, when you start working with wise people, you just become wise. Because you begin to see some things they do, and they'll be, it will begin to highlight your foolishness. Do you get that? Now, most people run away from that, because when you work with people who are wise or who are better than you in some things, when they begin to operate, when you're around them, you begin to feel uncomfortable. Isn't that true? Because they begin to challenge your mediocrity. They begin to challenge, you know, things that, you know, you are so used to, your habits, your thought patterns, and all that. They begin to challenge it. And so people feel uncomfortable. So because of that feeling, they isolate themselves. They stay away from those people, and they work with people who are very comfortable with their mediocrity. People that, you know, you, talk about, you can talk about the same things and they will say, yeah, you're a good person. You know, you are doing great. You know, because great in their own context is, you know, it's very limited. Amen. I don't know if you have had some people before, you shared a dream with them that God gave you that 
and you mention a particular amount of money that, that, that God told you to believe for, okay? And then the next thing you knew was that they opened their mouth and said, what? Are you crazy? You've not even, you know, believed God for a thousand dollars. You're talking about, you know, something of a hundred thousand dollars. And before you were, you are done, all the faith you had, everything that you had just leaves you. <laughs> just because of you talk to the wrong people. They are dream killers, amen? Some of them don't want to kill your dreams deliberately, but because they're not dreamers themselves, so they are operating at their own levels and their frequencies, and you, you just discover that when you talk with them, you find out that you go down to their levels. Like I told you on Thursday, in nature, things usually move from high concentration to low concentration. You know, the, you know diffusion and all that. Temperature change. When something is hot and you place it beside something that is, something that is cold, the one that is cold is going to take out of what is the, the heat, and the one that is hot is going to become colder. So that is it. When you work with people, you spend most of your time. No, you've got to deal with all kinds of people. We have to reach out to people. We have to evangelize. We have to talk to all kinds of people. You need to, ha you need to have that as part of your life, right? That's your output. But if you don't get inspired, you will expire. You must always inspire yourself. So that's why you must be intentional about being around people, about being around people that inspire you. And like I told you, you're going to average out the the, the closest set of people to you over time in your life. So if you want a very good average, make sure you get somebody who is right up there that keeps challenging you ahead of you, that you're talking to. Get some friends that are on the move, amen? And get some upcoming mentors and protégés that are also on the move. They are learning from you. By the time you average that out, you discover that you are better. You learn some things from your prodigies, you learn some things from your peers, and you learn some things from your mentors. You just find out that your life just starts to change. Amen? Very easy way to change your life. Jesus Christ did it. He was with his disciples all the time. And they said, after he was gone in Acts, they said, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they saw that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they were uneducated men, but they saw how bold they were and the way they were operating, they perceived that they had been with Jesus. So there's a perception of who you have been with. People are going to see who you've been with by the way you talk and by the way you live your life. So why don't you do this, you know, do this intentionally. And then the last one I talked to you about was the law of the new seasons. The law of new seasons. God is going to use relationships to bring you into new seasons of life. We see it all through. Peter met Jesus. He had been a fisherman for all his life. And then he just go, went through a disappointment. It was a terrible thing. It was a terrible night. He didn't, rip, he didn't get any kind of any fish and all that. He'd been toiling. And then this man appears and says, let me use your boat. You know, isn't that the way God works? Is he went, listen, everybody, some, some people think that when you want to have an encounter with God, the first thing God is going to ask for, you know, is to ask for your spirituality. You know, like saying, no, no, no. Usually go through the Bible. God is going to ask for something you have. God, God asked, Jesus asked for his boat. But Jesus had something else in mind. So Jesus used his boat to preach to the people. And afterwards, now Jesus, you know, recompensed him back in the fishing business. But most importantly, Jesus wanted him to become a fisher of men. So usually the journey of destiny can start with an offering, like the one that we're receiving today. Somebody's destiny is going to be unlocked as you give the accelerator today. Amen. Because God, you just do that, and before you know it, it goes beyond just the finances. Your destiny is released. That's what happened to Peter that day. But it ushered Peter into a new season, and for that guy will have been lost in history. How many of you remember any fish, any other fisherman from 2,000 years ago? I mean, there were some good fishermen. Do you remember them? But Peter right now, we talk about him and all that. What changed him? He, somebody came into his life. Somebody came into his life on a day when he was disappointed, when he was down. And that's what began this his great journey of destiny. So God is going to send people to you after this accelerated conference already taking place in some of, your, some of your lives. And those people, they're going to come. Sometimes they're going to come and they're going to ask you for something you have. Just like Jesus did. They're going to ask you for something you have. Some of them will come and they don't even look like it. But as you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you are not afraid, you discover that that person that God sends to you, God is going to use that person to usher you into a new season of life. Amen. Somebody say amen. Get a bigger amen to that. Amen. This, also remember that when the devil also wants to 
He moved you into a new season in his own plans. He also sent someone. So you've got to be sensitive, okay? Whenever you see new relationship, be sensitive. Is this from God? Is this from the devil? You know, see, where is this leading me? Is this leading me somewhere? Watch, watch, you know, check the spirit, test the spirit. Amen. So there was one other law that I did not speak about, which had to do, all the ones I've been talking to you about, had to do, they all have to do with the importance of relationships and the benefits of relationships, right? I'm going to talk about how to initiate it today. I, I don't have the time, and that's why I have the book, which I'm going to talk about, you know, shortly. I'm going to move to how to initiate relationships. I've discovered that a lot of people don't know how to do it. So they have opportunities, but they don't know, they just don't know how to take it to the next level. Amen. So there's one other law that I, want, I wanted to share with you on the benefit of relationship, which I call the law of the measure. Everybody say the law of the measure. The law of the measure. And I call it the law of the measure because the law says that the measure of your spirituality, the measure of your spirituality is how you, you are able to function in relationships with other, with other people. Your ability to relate with people lovingly is a witness to and a measure of your spirituality. Relationships are revealers of character. Now, some people say they are very close to God. That, you know what? I am very spiritual. I pray. I do all that and I spend time with God. But they are very nasty with people. Now, I don't need to go to their rooms or their closet, or their house, to tell them you are lying. You are not close to God. You, are, you don't have a relationship with God. Because God is a people person. God is what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Why? The earth was, without, was formless and void. Darkness was all over the face of the deep. And then God said, and began to create. Why? Because he wanted to create a people, a family. God is a people person. He, there was a disappointment, but God didn't give up. He continued. Then he found a people through Abraham and says, you know what, through you, I want to raise a kingdom of priests and kings. And then Israel will mess up and God will come, did everything until the Savior came. And then he said, you know, through the Savior, he said, you are a new generation. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, you remember, right? You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation called to show forth, you know, God's light. Hallelujah. So God has always been on the quest of having a people on the earth, a people, a family, a kingdom. So God is a people person. So you cannot be a man of God or a woman of God or a person of God and not be a people person. Something is wrong. Amen? Something is wrong. The, the culmination of spirituality is called love. Everybody say love. That's the culmination of spirituality. It is love. It's love. Love. John chapter 13 verse 35 says, This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is how they're going to recognize. So there's a recognition. There's something that people will see. People will see your spirituality by the way you deal with people. By the way you deal with people. Nasty people are not spiritual. Please tell your neighbor, say nasty people are not spiritual. They might be religious, but they are not spiritual. Because true spirituality is what? It's love. You know, John was so, you know, he, he was, I mean, he made some statement there. Very, very powerful statement. For example, in 1 John chapter 4 verse 20, it says, if anyone says I love God, but keeps on hating his brother, he's a liar. For if he doesn't love his brother who is right there in front of him, how can he love God whom he has never seen? How can you say you love the invisible when you don't love the visible? So I, I don't want, you see, when I, I mean, I don't want to see how loud you pray in church. That's not the main thing. Or how all those things are important. What I watch out for in my own life and in the life of other people is how you treat those who can't do any good to you. How do you treat your house boy or house girl at home? How 
do you treat those who drive you? How do you treat all these people that seemingly are insignificant? They have no name. They have no honor before men. You know, the Bible tells us that it's a reversal. Oh, he said the first shall be last and the what? In the, you see, in the, eyes of, the most visible is not always the most honored before God. Look at the members of your body, right? The ones that you can see, right? You can replace, you know, I mean, you can, have, you can live without an eye, right? without your eyes, right? You can live without your ears, right? You can live without your hands, right? You can live without your legs. But can you live without your lungs? Have you seen your lungs before? Have you seen your heart before? Have you seen your kidney before? The ones that you can't see, they are the ones who have been given the most honor. So sometimes, you know, we're so used to honoring the visible people, which is good. We need to do it. You know, we're going to, you know, it's one of those laws. We've got to do it. But I just, I'm just telling you that really God is about us having wholesome, wonderful relationships in our families, on the job, with our friends, and being demonstrators of God's love. Hallelujah. To be intentional demonstrators of God's love. To believe in one another. To stand with people. To love people. To listen to people. To know the names of people. To do all that. I'm telling you, your life is just going to go to a new level when you just begin to live that way. you see doors opening for you. you see things happening for you. Amen. Somebody made a statement. He said, he said, the person who lives that way, even the undertaker will be sad. That is the person that buries people. That is always happy when people die. You know what I'm talking about? Because that's his business. He said, even the undertaker will be sad when such a person passes away. That, wow, I don't even, this one I don't want to bury. This because those, those are the people that make the world just light up. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I am going to apply the law of the measure. My spirituality will be shown by the way I treat people. Not by my big Bible, my quoting of scriptures, or the display of religiosity. Come on, give God a shout. Amen. So now, I want to talk, you know, quickly, I'll give you maybe two or so, on the, the laws of initiating relationships. How do you initiate relationships? Now, the first one is that, is, is this, I call it the law of orchestration. The law of orchestration. The law of orchestration. And it simply says that God will arrange divine relationships for you if you trust him to do so. God will arrange divine relationships for you if you trust him to do so. He will. He will. God will arrange it. There are some relationships that are strategic that you need. Some of them, you have not come in contact with them, but if you start to talk to God and start to pray about it, God will arrange such relationships for you. In Psalm 68, verse 6, I love the International Standard Version, but you could use any of, any of the versions. It says, God causes the lonely to dwell in what? Families. God places the lonely in families. Psalm 68, verse 6. He puts the lonely in families. Meaning God will find a family. He sets the lonely in families. So they're alone, but God will find some relationships and put you in there. You pray, you ask God and say, Lord, I, I know that there are some relationships that you have ordained for my life. I'm asking you from today. After living, accelerate. Let each day be filled with divine orchestrations. That's what's going to happen in your life in the name of Jesus. You know, I use the illustration of the search engine. You know, you use Google, you use all these things. You put one word in there, right? What happens when you put the word in there is that there are web crawlers, which are programs that just, you know, they, they just go around the web, everything that is on the web, and they look for words or sentences. They look for that keyword all over, and they bring out results for you. Amen. God says something also in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, it says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth. Ever said the whole earth? He runs to and fro across the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart are loyal to him. Amen. So God's 
eyes goes to and fro. There's no part of the earth that God's eyes does not scan in a second. It just sees everything. So now, if there's anybody who is there in any part of the earth that is necessary for your destiny, he gave you a promise. In Isaiah chapter 46, verse 11, he said, From the east I summon a bird of prey, and from the far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. Isaiah 46, verse 11. I summon a bird of prey, and from a far off land, a man who executes or who executes my, my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I've spoken it, I'll bring it to pass. Hallelujah. God says, I summon. In other words, as he searches, whoever is needed for your job, your work, your purpose, your family, the next thing you're supposed to do, as you ask God to orchestrate relationship in your life, you will see God begins to bring them across to you. Amen. Across you, just begin to meet them. But you've got to pray. Everybody say, I've got to pray. You have to pray. It doesn't just happen. Let me give you an example of a man, a man who did that. Hallelujah. So there was a time that Abraham wanted his son to have, a, wanted um, Isaac to have a particular kind of spouse from a particular place. So he sends his servant and says, go help me look. And then please, if you could help me turn to that place in Genesis 24 verse 12, from verse 12 to 16. This man did something. He said, oh, Jehovah, he began to pray. Because it was an impossible task. The guy was not there with you, and you have gone to a country. The, your, you know, your master has not been there. You're supposed to find a good wife for him. I mean, how many of you women right now will say yes to somebody when you have not even met the man? You just say, there's this nice guy somewhere, very you no know, good and all that, and I want you to marry him now. If, when you have not met him. And then... <laughs> You just decide. Amen. But that's what this guy had to do. And Abraham said, don't, don't make, make sure my son doesn't marry any, just anybody. I'm going, to send, I'm going to pray and God is going to send angels ahead of you. So divine orchestration happened you know, through the ministry of angels. He prayed, Oh Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today. So he, he prayed that prayer to God. Help me to accomplish the purpose of my journey. I'm using the Living Bible. Help me to accomplish the purpose of my journey. He says, see, here I am standing beside this spring and the girls of the villages are coming out to draw water. This is my request. When I ask one of them to drink and she says, yes, yeah, certainly I will water your camel too. Let that be the one you have appointed to be Isaac's wife. And the Bible says it happened. There was a divine orchestration. What I'm saying is that right now, some of you are praying for spouse. Some of you, you know, are look, you know, trusting God for spouses, trusting God for the right business partners, the right ministry partners. You pray the scriptures. Amen. Pray the scriptures. Pray in the spirit specifically to ask God to divinely orchestrate relationships in your life. God will set you in your own family, in your own company. In Jesus' name. Amen. The law of intentionality. The law of intentionality. The law of intentionality. The law, did, did you get the, the other books? The law of intentionality. Amen. So now, when you begin to pray for divine relationships, as you start praying for divine relationships, God will start making presentations for you. God will start making presentations to you. You start making presentations. You're going to be meeting people. Somebody just on the plane. Somebody at work. Somebody just calls you. Or in a conference like this, somebody just comes to say hello and all that. But you know where most people stop? They, help, they say hello. And they have a good time, right? And then they stop there. And they just stop there. And then psh, the relationship fizzles out and it doesn't accomplish its purpose. So, for example, when we were in the, in the office with Dr. Mensah, you know, we're just talking and talking. I didn't ask for his number, right? And he just, as he was just about to enter the car, he said, give him my number. Of course, intentionality is I'm going to get that number and God man knows what I'm going to do with that number. <laughs> Pastor Godman, sorry. This guy, they're about to stone me. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
You know? So you in, in, intentional, right? So I know, I know what I'm going to do. Because I know that that was a presentation. That was a divine orchestration. That was a teaching anointing, an apostolic teaching anointing that's been there, touch nations. That's what I intend to do. So if he says, give him my number, then I'm, I'm going to use that number. I'm going to be intentional. Do you get that? So the, the, the law, God said, says in Proverbs 18 verse 24, that the man that has friends must show himself friendly. The KJV, the Jubilee translation, I really love that, but you can use the KJV. He said the man, he that will have friends, must himself what? Be friendly. Must himself what? Be friendly. In other words, you, it's, it's, the onus is on you. The onus is on you to become friendly. You know, there are some people that say, I, I go to the church and nobody has ever called me. Or, I know, I know they call people and they do all that, you know, in elevation. But sometimes people say that, I know, I don't know, I come to church, nobody. No, the question is, have you called somebody? Have you joined the groups? Have you started participating in church? It's when you become intentional, that's when you begin to convert, which is the next law, the law of conversion. You begin to convert strangers into friends. When you, begin, when you start becoming intentional. Listen, intentional, intentionality is one of the keys to life. Mary Kay Ash, which many of you know, especially the lady, said there are three kinds of people in life. There are those who make things happen. Oh, let me start. He said there are those who what? There are those who make things happen. Then there are those who watch things happen. And then there are those who wonder what happened. So which one are you? Because right now, I place those books there as gifts to some people who are intentional. Those books that I put there is for intentional people. <laughs> That's how success works in life. I don't know where that one came from. Maybe it's a gift from the Lord. <laughs> it's for somebody here. Amen. Praise God. Did you see what they just did? You've got to be like that in life. You got to, God is going to present some opportunities to you. You have to be what? Intentional. You go for it. Now, if they did not stand up, the books will remain there. You know what I will do? I will just pack it and go. Amen. And that's it. But sometimes, you know, you, I mean, in life, you have to go for it. You have, when you meet someone and it strikes you that this, this, this person might be important to my destiny. Don't wait for the person to make the move. You make what? Make the first move. So I tell people intentionality, the areas of intentionality, and I'm going to end with that. The, the areas of intentionality, number one, you can be intentional in positioning. I would say intentional positioning. In other words, you can change your location. What I mean is that you just, you know, you just position yourself. Maybe, you know, you, you, want, you want to meet more lawyers. Do you get what I'm saying? You want to meet more lawyers because you're a lawyer and you want some networking in that area. Why are you going to the doctor's meetings? When is more lawyers you want? What do you do? You find out where the lawyers are meeting. Great lawyers, Christian lawyers are meeting and all that. And then you go there intentionally. Before you know it, you have a bunch of them. You have one of them or two of them. I do that. Anywhere where I know that there is a, you know, there, there is a, a particular set of people that I want, either I want to move, step into another territory for ministry or whatever, I find out what that. I use that in the city of Chicago also. And I just put myself in there and then they begin to see me. And before you know it, some relationship begins to develop. And I've seen things open. I've seen things open. For example, the place we're going in Rwanda, we're going to have ministers from all over Africa. From all over Africa. We're going to have hundreds of them from all over Africa. We're just going to go there and bless them. But, but that's how God extends his kingdom. You just step in there intentionally. That's what that's how I say. I'm going to stand by the well. After I prayed, I'm going to stand by the well because he knows the well is where people will usually come. That's where everybody gathers. Amen? I'm going to stand by there and then one of them, you're going to lead me to the right person. Amen? 
Intentionality in communication. Intentionality in communication. Intentional communication. Intentional what? Communication. Sometimes you have to do that. You just get the phone number or the Facebook message and, you know, just a little, a little message and say, hello, I met you at so, 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 and so place, you know, just, you know, wanted to say hello. You, I've seen things just start from there that have become a blessing to thousands of people just from Facebook communication. So, for example, I pre, you know, when I preached at Wavbeck um, this February, Pastor Fojo and I have never met. We have never talked by phone. We have only chatted two times on Facebook. That was it. But that became a blessing to people. It's practicing inten intentionality. Intentionality. So be intentional. You don't know what God is going to do with this thing. But you first of all have to believe that God, please play it. You have to believe that God has, God, that relationship is, the relationships are important. They are essentials in life. Intentional seeding. Intentional seeding. Intentional seeding. Sometimes, you know, there's a scripture in um, <laughs> Proverbs 19 verse 6 says, Many seek favor from a ruler, but everyone is a friend to a person who gives gifts. Everyone is a, is a friend to what? So listen, if you, are, you, are, you lack a dread of relationship in your life, just become a giver. Do you get it? Become a giver. Become a giver. And I'm not just talking about giving money. Now, I'm talking, this thing I'm teaching you, these are not manipulative stuff because this is how to be done in spirit of love. I'm talking about being a genuine lover of people. I'm talking about you. First of all, you know, you know one of the, the, the greatest gifts you can give anybody? Do you know the greatest gift you can give anybody apart from salvation, right? Coming to know Jesus Christ. The greatest gift, what everybody is searching for in this world, they're searching for significance. They're searching for importance. They're searching for importance. Whenever you look at your Instagram, I mean, check your Instagram, whose picture is there the most? Is it not yours? Whenever you see a photograph, sorry, my alarm is ringing. Whenever you see a, 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 a photograph, a group photograph, and you are in there. Which one does your eyes go for? Who is the person that your eyes goes to look at first? Me? No, you look at yourself. Look at yourself. They call, I think it was two years ago, that Twitter called it the year of the selfies. Two years, two years ago, it was the year of the selfies. Because people, you know, selfies, you know. I mean, growing up, people took your picture, but now you have to take it yourself. Because you are important to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen? It's when it becomes excessive. That's when you have a problem. But your importance to you. So one of the greatest gifts you can give people is to make sure you don't demean them. Is to make sure you show them love like Jesus will show them love. Right? Walk slowly through the crowd. After accelerate. Walk slowly through the crowd. What does that mean? Walk slowly when you meet people. Shake people's hand. Look into their eyes. Find out their names and call their names. Say hello and put their names there. I'm telling you, you will see how that is going to change a lot of things about your life. Your call, just walk slowly. Try to think about what people are, what, 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 what could be on their mind right now? How are they perceiving this situation? And then just, just begin to do that. Now listen, with you know, these few laws, there are 21 of them, and I'm so privileged and thankful to Pastor Godman to allow me to release this book here in Nigeria at Elevation Church today. So, please, uh, we have about, you know, we have a thousand copies, but we have to take some, I have to split it down. I think we're leaving about 500 copies here. So I want to hear the report that the entire 500 copies, you all, you all took it. Amen. So please, see, that's intentionality. She got it. She's like, she's been waiting. That, that one is mine. Exactly. So make sure you know, go pick yours. Amen. And just learn, listen, learn this loss. 
learn this loss. They have changed my life. They will change your life. In the name of Jesus. Come on, rise up on your feet and I'll just say a word of blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to your precious people. It's a privilege. And I do appreciate you for this. I do not take it for granted. I thank you because each and every one here is very important. And there are even some people right here right now who may have come to this service today for the first time and they don't have a relationship with you. They don't know what it means yet to experience your love in their lives. Lord, I'm just asking that you open their hearts, you open their eyes, and let them come to know you. You are the, one, the most intentional person. For God so loved the world that he gave. He practiced intentional seeding. That he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. You are the greater, you are the one who seeks. The father who stands until the prodigal comes home, running towards the prodigal, the intentional lover. You are the one who searches for the lost coins, the lost sheep, and you carry one lost sheep on your shoulder. You are the one that rejoices when one sinner repents. You are the God of relationship. You are a people person and you love everybody here. So Lord, I pray specially for those people who don't know you, that they will come to know you today. They will give their hearts to you. And I pray for every other person here, Lord, that they will come to know your love more. And they will come to, they will, they will come to, be, they will become expressions and, and, you know, distributors of that love everywhere that you have planted them. Thank you, Lord, for orchestrating divine relationships on behalf of everyone. Thank you for planting people in families. Thank you for chasing away loneliness, discouragement, and lack of helpers. Thank you, Father, for opening up doors of relationships all around these nations and beyond for everyone under the sound of my voice. And thank you, Lord, because as a result, your kingdom is further advanced. Your name is glorified in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you so much.